Show up. Right. How's everyone doing? We got a lot of people here tonight. Welcome to the dance party. Uh, it's Friday. We had an event on Friday night. We got to have a little bit of fun. Uh, there's too many boring webinars out there to, to do more of those. Um, uh, thanks for joining us. We got hundreds of people here. Uh, we've got our uh, Q&A kind of rolling here in just a minute. Um, and what we want to be able to do tonight is answer as many questions as possible. We don't have a lot to talk about. We're not going to do a presentation. We're just going to get to your questions. And so uh, without further ado, let's just do introductions. I'll start. My name is Paul Ledesma. I'm the Director of Undergraduate Admission at the USC Viterbi School of Engineering. It's a pleasure to have you here. As the rest of the staff are introducing themselves, I'm going to launch a poll for every one of you so that you can help us understand a little bit more about you. I'll go next. Hi, I'm Becky. I'm the Associate Director of Undergraduate Admission at Viterbi. Welcome. Thank you for joining us, like Paul said, on a Friday afternoon. Hi, everyone. My name is Angie. I'm a Senior Assistant Director with the Viterbi School, and welcome. We're looking forward to having some fun. Hi, everyone. I'm Michael Cox. I'm the Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admission here at Viterbi, and let me add my welcome as well. Hi, everyone. I'm Stacey Badger, Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admission for Viterbi. I'm going to change this distracting background. It was just to get us going and get the party started. Um, but welcome, excited to, to see everyone. I don't, know. I don't know if I should keep my background or, or change. It probably is a little distracting and I don't want to put anybody into a, you know, into a trance. So let's, let's, let's change it to something a, a little more, I don't know, mellow and fun. Uh, let's do this one. There we go. That's whatever. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> all right. So this is your event we're here for an hour we want to answer your questions so go ahead and use that q a feature uh, once you start typing in questions into that um, all of you that don't have questions or you're curious what other people's questions are you're going to have an ability to upvote them and so we're going to sit back for a little bit here uh, and also make sure that you have a chance to ask questions and we're going to see what's kind of going up to the top and then we will just start answering those questions uh, in some sort of uh, uh, democratic way um <laughs> I, I don't like that people are answering paul as their favorite <laughs> <laughs> everyone <laughs> they haven't met me yet i was gonna say becky it really just shows who they don't like and and, and becky i think you're you're already just upsetting people for some reason <laughs> <laughs> it's just because they haven't met me yet that's why yeah little secret becky's usually everybody's favorite <laughs> There you go, Becky. You just got a sympathy vote. Oh, look, you're getting some more votes, Becky. There you go. Good job. Oh, Stacy took the lead. Well, I think I think they're right just me. Paul. They think you're in charge when really. I know. It's, it's just the face. I think there's some sort of like power involved, which I hey, hey I'm. This is the only place where I win, and so I want to make sure because <laughs> I lose to you guys all the time and everything else. So this is whatever I can. Um, all right, we got some good questions here, and with 51 upvotes, 52 upvotes, Lan An Dangvu has asked the first question, which is, how to be the best applicant? Really short, succinct, and to the point, which is basically, how did I get admitted? How how, how will this all work? And um, who wants to start us off with it? There's not, by the way, preview, spoiler alert to this, there is not going to be an answer to this, um, but we will tell you how we do our process and we will kind of help you understand how to approach that application so you can be a competitive applicant. So who wants to jump in here? I mean, I can start, I guess, and then anyone can add on what, what I don't say. Um, there is no best applicant. And I, I know that seems like that's not the answer since some students get admitted and some students don't, but I think the way to have, or what you should do to have the best application that you possibly can have as, as a student is to 
and I know we talk about this all the time, be authentic. Let us get to know you, not your English teacher who reviewed your essay or your mom who's standing over your shoulder while you're filling this out. We want to get to know you as a student. We want to know what you're interested in doing. Um, and, and we can tell um, when you're being authentic and honest in your application. And so I think those, those are the best applications when we really feel like we get to know a, a student um, for who they are and what they you know, their, what their interests are and what they want to do with their engineering degree. And so I think those tend to be the better, the better applications when we, when we really get to know a student in 250 words or less, which I know is hard to do, but, but that's kind of what we're looking for. Good, good points. Other, other thoughts? Yeah, I think, um, you know, a lot of you are asking about the supplements and we'll get to that talking more specifically about them. I think, we can venture to say that the majority of students are gonna look academically the same. And so like, you're all going to fit, you're all gonna look competitive academically. And so where you really start to kind of stand out and start to, you know, be a unique person, your own person is like Becky mentioned, like the essays, the supplements, but also in the activities. And I think it's really important as I've had conversations with students to just point out, it's not necessary to have any engineering experience whatsoever in order to be a good engineering applicant. Um, because a lot of students are worried that they have to have, and some of you will have it, and that's awesome that you have experience in engineering, but some of you will have no experience in engineering, and that's okay, um, because we want to know that you're passionate about other things as well, and those things can be community service, but not limited to community service. They can be involvement in school. They can be involvement in your community church. They can be your home responsibilities, any other additional responsibilities that you have. And all, all of these things are gonna help us really get to know you more uniquely um, and just get us, just give us a picture of who you are um, outside of the classroom as well. Yeah, I think, I think to kind of help wrap this up is that for those of you that may have gone to an information session with me or heard me speak before, there, there are to kind of two levels to the applications, right? We get about 13,000 applications every year. And uh, the, the first question when we get to an application is, is this student academically, academically prepared to go into our engineering program? And so have you been taking the most rigorous classes available to you at your high school? And have you been doing well? Have you been getting A's and B's? And specifically with math, we need to be able to see that you have a grade in that you have success in calculus. So if you're in calculus right now, we need to be able to see those calculus grades in order for us to make that decision. And so about 75% of our pool of our applicant pool each year is, is ready to go into our program and is prepared. And so very quickly, it's not about grades and it's not about anything else that you may have done academically because you can kind of pass that threshold pretty quickly. Afterward, it's a subjective review. We are human beings along with the rest of the Office of Admission that review applications. We read everything. We're trying to understand a little bit more about you. And we're trying to understand how you can contribute to our community. And so to go to the point of, of Becky's point, authenticity is key here. This question of understanding how to uh, figure out who you are and tell us your story, not try to figure out what the right answer is. And I think that's where a lot of these questions are going to end up going. There's no such thing as a right answer to these questions on the application, other than you need to do, you need to write them well so that we understand you. If we don't understand you, then we can't have the opportunity to admit you. So I hope that that helps as how to be the best applicant. And also the last thing I'll add is don't miss the deadline, uh, December 1st, right? You got to get your application in by December 1st and, and make sure that we are, when we're in there and we're reading it, that we don't get confused or need to ask you more questions. That, that's really the, the main thing. Uh, great question. So the, the next question I think is, the, the next three I think are all the same question. And so let, how, Patrick and Elise and Sasha, uh, it's all about the engineering supplemental questions. So we have two different questions uh, that are inside the Common App specific to engineering applicants. and. Patrick's first question is, what do we look for in response to the question about the NAE grant challenges? Your thoughts. <laughs> We're asking your thoughts. Uh, what are your thoughts? We, we show you the, the grand challenge question, uh, the, the, the 14 grand challenges. We give you the link to it so you can read more about it. And the question, if I remember the wording correctly, someone correct me if I'm wrong, is look at them and tell us what you think is the most important one and why. So what, and, and this is where I will probably say this over and over tonight. Don't overthink this. We wrote the questions like we this the five of us. We wrote that question and we wrote it specifically to say, look at it. Tell us what you think and why there, there, there's not a right answer. We're just trying to understand what's important to you. Um, is one better than another? No, but you can explain yourself. So help us understand what you think is the most important grand challenge and why. Uh, when it comes to the other supplements, uh, it says, how can I make them sound less generic? Um, 
why do you think your response is generic? I mean, does someone want to jump in on this or have any thoughts on, on, on Elise's questions? I would just add on on the grand challenges question is that a lot of students think that it has to be about their major. So they look for the grand challenge that's about their major or their major relates to it and they don't find the perfect one and they panic. But a lot of these challenges, actually all of these challenges are going to be interdisciplinary. They're going to require um, engineers from a lot of different backgrounds. So don't think uh, where's the electrical engineering grand challenge or where's the mechanical engineering grand challenge. Um, doesn't even have to be about your major. You could be applying to mechanical engineering and then uh, maybe it's sustainability or maybe uh, you know it's, it's climate change that you're really concerned about. Uh, maybe it's water, um, maybe it's reverse engineering the brain. Uh, that's not what we're looking for. Uh, it doesn't have to be related to your major. What you should be looking for is the one that you think is most important. And it may be related to your major, it may not be. Um, but uh, yeah, don't overthink that part. I feel like, oh, sorry, go Stacey. <laughs> I to add on to that too, sometimes students think that we're looking for you to pick one specific grand challenge. Like they think there's a grand challenge that's like the correct answer of the 14. Um, and that's not true either. It really is just what you think is important and why. It's, it's not a trick question by any means. It's, it's, it is exactly what the question is, is asking. It's not more than that or less than that. It's exactly that. Keep in mind, everyone, that the application in its entirety, and that's what's important to understand is that we're reading all of it, is an attempt for, is the only way that you tell us about yourself. And so we, the only way we get through this is by understanding each of these. There, there actually aren't generic answers. There's just how you think about it. So do your best to, to give that, that level of, of, of your own self into it and help us understand that. Uh, more specifically, I think this is going to be a theme tonight. What are we looking for? We're not looking for anything uh, other than to get to know you. Um, there, there aren't, I, I had this conversation with someone, I think it was earlier this week or last week, and I wanted them to kind of get out of your school way of thinking. Um, most of you are fantastic and great students. And unfortunately, you kind of view this, this uh, application as an assignment in school where you think that there's a right answer and there's a way to get it done right, um, or the way to, to earn an A, and, and there just isn't. Um, this is honestly similar to a, 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 a resume or a job application. It just tells us who you are. Different than job application, we don't have an interview. So all we do is we read and we understand more about you and we do our best to project your ability to contribute to our environment. And when we choose students, we're not choosing you know, we, we need this type of student. We need all types of students because that mix of student backgrounds, that mix of different ideas and, and, and challenges that they've come up with and, and ways in which they think, those are all going to contribute to our classroom in different ways. And the only way we make the best student population is by bringing in the most diverse student body of all of these different elements. And that's hopefully going to help us. So your whole job is to make sure that we understand who you are. Uh, and, and that's that's it. And you put your you throw your hat in the ring and we see where it lays out. And at the end of the day, uh, we should talk about stats here. 13,000 apps, uh, you know, the admit rate for USC it, year to year, it changes. But roughly, I think a good target number for you to think about is that it's going to be 10 percent. And, and to be to be, you know, negative about that, that means 90 percent of our applicants will not be admitted. And that's that's a real number. You, you should you should really think about that. It is, it's, it's about understanding how there's no way to increase those chances for you. There, there's no way. All there is is a way to to tell us who you are and, and we will go through this process of trying to understand what's gonna be a good fit for us. And a good fit is gonna be a different for every student, if, that, if that, hopefully that makes sense. Is that, am I covering that well, y'all? Did I get too off base? Okay. Um, and so I think we answered Sasha's question. Um, I'm going to actually take a break here and I'm going to post the poll results because this is fun. We got people from all over, a few international students as well. Uh, most of you invited. Uh, and this is- I want to recount. What's that? Shenanigans. I want to recount. I want to recount. <laughs> Revote. <laughs> it was just called for me. Looks like it was just called for me. NBC just projected. So, fun. I get to win. It's the only thing I win this week, you know. All right. Um, next up, Stephen, for the dream snack movie trip questions, are they just for roommate selection or do they have a bearing on the review process? I'll start this one. It has nothing to do with roommate selection whatsoever. 
Uh, I don't know where that came from, Stephen. So whoever told you that is uh, doesn't know what they're talking about. Has but nothing... it does have to do with the review process, though. There are right answers. <laughs> it's our process, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Michael, what it, so it, what happens when they put down the wrong snack or the wrong movie? Oh, uh, they're done. Yeah. Throw it away. <laughs> Next. <laughs> so, you guys, this part of the application should take you less than five minutes. It should be the most fun. Um, I like it the most because it's no one ever has anyone look this over and make sure it's written properly or correct. Um, and it, it really gets lets us get to know you. What's your favorite food? What's your theme song? What you know? So it should not take more than five minutes, and it really has no bearing on anything except just kind of a fun part of the application. It just sort of breaks up the application, so you're not just trying to write 250 words four times, it, it makes it so you can actually think about things and change your way of thinking for, for five minutes or so. So it, it's a nice break more than anything. It's also that for us, you know, mm -hmm. we're reading and digesting all the things you wrote and, and to get to that, it's like, oh, cool. Uh, I like that too. Or, oh my God, what? <laughs> Which is usually, usually where I, where I, where I come from. Uh, but no, not, nothing, negative or positive happens. It's sometimes there's some funny stuff in there and it, it, it helps us. I, I like the breaking up uh, thought they had, Stacy. Also, Stacy calling you out right now. Uh, love the hair. Did you get this done today? No, I just, I washed it today. <laughs> <laughs> nope, just took a shower. All the God is, I just let it do its thing. I thought there was like, a, I was like, wow, this is a special event. I, I didn't get dressed up. I should have. Nope, just washed um, uh, Abr Abr Abraham, Abiram, Abirham. Someone help me with this. Abirham Tambada. Um, what does USC look for in a good candidate? I think we answered this one, but is there something else from this take that you all want to add in? Like what, what makes a good candidate other than obviously they need to do well in our coursework. I mean, that's really the only thing that you can quantify is great. You know, uh, doing well academically. Um, but then beyond that, we're just, just like how you are all going to these info sessions and learning about schools and trying to find a school that's a good fit for you. Admission officers around the country are, you know, looking for students that, that they feel is a good fit for their, their programs and, and, you know, what they offer and the opportunities that they have. And so um, there's really nothing that, there's no one specific thing we're looking for beyond, you know, good academics. And then everything else from then on is, is just sort of trying to get to know the student that's applying. and. There's really no way to, to quantify that. Yeah, Paul touched on this earlier, but when we are uh, reviewing files, we're trying to create the most diverse, well-rounded student body that we can. Um, I think that a lot of students misinterpret that, that we're looking for the most well-rounded student and each one needs to fit that exact prototype. But there is no prototype, there's no mold, there's no perfect candidate that we're looking for. Uh, we're looking for filling up classrooms with lots of different types of people. So the best way that you can put your best foot forward is to just represent yourself as effectively as possible. Just communicate to us who you are, because then we can kind of see, oh, this is how they'd really fit into our, our student body here. But if we don't know you, then we, we can't make a, a judgment either way. Uh, and that's not good. If we reach the end of the application, we feel like, I don't really know who that person is. Uh, that's usually not a good sign. And the opposite is a good sign if we know who you are. Awesome. Um, Kitty uh, has a great question here. Kitty Fan, is Viterbi going to review our applications or the USC General Admission Committee going to review it? I'm assuming you mean us and Viterbi because Andrew Viterbi is not involved in the actual admission process. He does not read the applications. He does teach, uh, but he, he's not reviewing the applications. Uh, <laughs> I'm full. Of, this is what happens when we hold an event on Friday night, guys. This is <laughs> I'm going full dad jokes today. Um, so uh, yeah, both we are all involved, and it is a collaborative process. And the Central Office of Admission is responsible for admission decisions. You should understand that at the Viterbi School, we do not make admission decisions, but we are involved in the review process and helping to influence that decision and help to shape our incoming class. So we're involved in the process, uh, we're in there, we work collaboratively. And I think what's most important is that you understand that there's not one single person that makes an admission decision at USC. This is a highly collaborative process that involves, uh, my, favorite, my favorite term is spirited debate. Um, uh, what I usually just translate to, we fight. 
uh, we, 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 we go, we go toe to toe on some things, you know, I could really like somebody and someone in, in, in this group could not vice versa. Someone in central Michigan could not, or have a different take on them. Uh, and, and honestly, that's what we spend our time doing. We spend our time comparing our own impressions of students, uh, what we believe their ability to contribute might be, uh, how they've, you know, maybe they've overcome challenges in their life or how they, wh what they've done with the, the life that they have now and their background. And, and it's, it's, it's the quantifying process, which is about, you know, understanding your ability to do well in the, in the program, the academics, that's easy. That's, that's quantifiable. We can look at courses, we can see what you've done, but everything else is highly subjective. And so we go over things and, you know, each of us, we win some and we lose some and, and that's okay. That's, that's the part of this process. It is it is a very, very subjective, collaborative process where there are no right answers, there are no wrong answers. And I know that's frustrating uh, because you're like, I just want to know whether I'm going to get admitted. And, and I, I, yeah, I have to point you back to those stats. You know, I, I don't know. And we are a highly competitive institution, but we take great care in this process and we read everything that we possibly can. Like it, when we get into an application, we're reading everything. And we're trying to understand you or we take a very human approach to this. And I think we do a good job when you look at our students. Our students are very successful. I, I can't take over that question, but you guys, anyone jump in on that? I just want to say, like, I've worked in other admission offices, and I think it's cool the way that USC, um, like, collaborates with different departments because you've got central admission looking at every student applying, but then you can have the departments kind of specialize and like really focus in on the application. So like we can focus in specifically on engineering students and we can learn more about engineering students very specifically. So like, you know, Paul and Becky have the most experience working in engineering. And so they really know what they're looking for in engineering students. And thus like, you can, we can, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, you can really focus in on engineering admissions versus having to spread across um, you know, all 15 or 16 schools that USC has. Right. It's, it's, if there was a centralized process that was only singul singularly responsible for that, you might be able to say like, oh, engineers would start to look like this and, and music students would start to look like this. But when we look at just engineering, then we can kind of uphold the integrity of that, that overall population in engineering to be incredibly unique and dynamic, not just the whole university is dynamic because every university is dynamic, but we can make sure that we have our own level of dynamism in addition to the overall university dynamism. I think it's what you're getting at. Yes, thank you. I was like trying to put words together and you understood perfectly. <laughs> I, I, trans I translate. <laughs> um, next up, uh, I already did this one. So uh, Ali's question jumped above it, but I'll get to that next. I'm gonna do Jasmine's questions first. Uh, does admissions look for students who are generally well versed in the principles of engineering and expect them to display their knowledge or is the application okay for those who y'all don't need to know anything about engineering and I, I think that's what's most important uh, don't worry about this uh, the majority of you have no engineering experience and you're just thinking about this idea maybe I want to study engineering that's great you're gonna be fine for some of you that happen to have engineering experience great that's awesome but that doesn't necessarily put you at an advantage uh, again, the, the ability to do well is really in the grades and your coursework that you have so far, math and science coursework, is specifically to engineering. Uh, engineering work prior to this is, is honestly not necessarily helpful. It, it maybe gets you excited about engineering. We're excited that's out there. But just because you're on a robotics team doesn't mean you're going to be good at engineering down the road. Uh, there's actually a stronger correlation to your calculus grade to your engineering coursework than involvement in robotics or involvement in um PLTW project lead the way stuff, or, or, or like you took a programming class, or you've taken you've taken a million programming classes, if you've known how to code since you were three, uh, calc grade is still one of the most important elements, right? So because that's going to prove the ability to do well in our coursework. Um, and even if you have programming experience, you don't have programming experience, all those students come together and everybody does fine. And we're going to place students appropriately. If you have some sort of C, uh, uh, ability in your background so far that you don't need to take maybe a specific like intro programming class or a specific math class, we're going to advance you in that sequence uh, appropriately. So, so don't worry about this. Everyone's going to be just, just fine. Someone else want to jump in on that or did I, did I cap? Did yeah, I cap? You, you got it all. Yeah. You don't have to have any experience at all to be admitted and to be successful at USC. We'll Allie asked, you need to I'm, know. Sorry. I'm sorry. I, stepped I, I was going to say the professors at USC will teach you everything you need to know. Yes. Alias, are the quick takes intended to be one word answers or can we give a brief elaboration? I've gotten this question like six times this week. 
please keep it to one word or a few. And I say this just because like, I think that's what they're intended to be. And maybe like a quick little snippet, like hot Cheetos, cause they're awesome, you know? And so that's it. But then I feel like some students go on this whole like philosophical tangent about how hot Cheetos are their favorite snack for this reason and X, Y, and Z. Like you keep it short and sweet, I think is the best. That's me anyway. Now I want to read an essay on, on hot Cheetos. Why they're so great. Yeah, just to confuse things, make it as long as possible. That's the right thing to do. <laughs> I think the answer, read all those files. If I could settle it, is that do what you want. Um, it's intended to be incredibly brief. You don't need to explain your answers, I think is really what the question is. You do not need to explain your answers. It's literally like, like Stacey said earlier, it's a nice break in the application for you and for us. Have fun with it um, and, and don't overthink it. And that's really the best advice for every part of this conversation, especially when it comes to the application. Don't overthink it. Um, there's, there's not a right or a wrong way to do this, okay? Um, Leia or Laya, Leia or Laya, uh, Golamudi has, what advice do you have for the supplements? I think we already answered this question. Yes, or do we have other thoughts that we wanted to jump in on? Um. If I can just add just a quick thought, um, just so you know, none of us are engineers. Um, so it, it, like for me, when students start talking very technical, like I, it goes over my head sometimes and I'll take the time to Google things. And I think it's really cool because I feel like sometimes students, I'm like, ah, oh, they know so much more about engineering than I do. But uh, I think these supplements are not meant to be technical writing either. And I think sometimes not just engineers, but like, you know, you're, that's how you've been kind of almost K through 12 or your schools abroad have taught you to be very technical in writing. And that is the exact opposite of what these supplements are meant to be. And I think we talked about, and, and that's why it's so difficult sometimes for students to like just talk about themselves in the supplements or even just in college essays. That's a great point because more often than not, when someone gets really technical, I can see through the BS. Like, it, like, usually it's like you're, you're trying to fluff up the application to make it sound better. And I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. Or like, or this student read one Wired article on some sort of thing and is now just kind of regurgitating it back to me. It's not a technical thing. Um, and, and oftentimes, I remember being in a specific process when looking at an application with a faculty member. The faculty member was like, this kid doesn't know what he's talking about. And I don't know what, what he's getting from, from this. Um, so don't, don't go that route. Yeah, this is this is this this is a human process about you as a human being. Uh, it, it and your grades are going to tell us the things we need to know about your ability to do well in our program, not your answers to your essays or your supplements or your short answers. I like Jasmine's next question here. Uh, what usually deters or turns you off when reviewing an application? For, fair warning here, guys. We can't go the whole hour on this one question. I know we would probably. Want <laughs> So many examples. <laughs> um, I I mean, I think the most important thing, not, nothing really, nothing's going to make us, you know, throw away your application and, and not finish reading it. Um, but there are some things, at, at least in like the writing supplements, um, you want to make sure the things you write about are appropriate. You want to make sure that your thoughts are um, concise and your essays sort of flow so that we can stay focused on them. Um, you know, try as we might, we're, we're reading thousands of applications and so thousands of essays and thousands of short answer questions. And so um, I think it's important that, that your essays aren't all over the place because then it's hard to follow. Um, so that can be difficult. Um, but, but really besides the one or two essays I've read in my 11 years at Viterbi that were inappropriate, everything else has been fine. Um, so that, that's really what you want to focus on, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think for me, when students continuously try to be like really funny and clever throughout the entire application, sometimes I'm like, okay, am I actually getting to know you or is this like a persona that you're putting on? So like definitely something can be funny here and there, you know, especially in the quick takes, that's what they're for. But yeah, the whole application should not be like your stand up comedy special by any means. No, I, um, I could go on for days on this one. I'm trying to figure out how to summarize it for everybody. Um, but it's really off of Stacy's point, which is don't listen to people's advice on how you should fill out your application. I think that's number one, uh, because you know how you think and how you want to go about this. So you, you do you is really the main point. Um, because sometimes 
students will come to me and say, oh, I, I, I thought I was supposed to like stand out in some sort of way. And like, maybe that's, I'm going to be funny or I'm going to be shocking in this, in this essay. And uh, 99 out of 100 times, yeah, you stand out, not in a good way, not in a really good way. And like the files that I remember, the applications that I remember, like to this day after 20 years are all negative uh, because they were just outlandishly weird um, or like concerning of some level. So tell your story. Uh, don't think you're being generic. I'll go back to that word because that was a question that was used earlier. We're, we, you have your own story. You have your own background. Uh, and we want to know what it is. Also, um, <laughs> English teachers are going to hate me. Don't write like it's an English class. And this might, this kind of goes off like Angie's uh, uh, topic about uh, technical stuff. Um, write to tell us your story and, and, and be as clear as you possibly can. I think as Michael said earlier, this idea of, of a clear understanding of who you are, something that's well written, is not necessarily using onomatopoeia and imagery uh, and, and some sort of you know, metaphorical illusion in your, in your essay. Um, mo it, if you think of it where we're reading, I always give this as a good word of advice. If I read and I have to stop and go like, wait, what am I reading? I have to go back and read it again. It's not going well for you, right? Because all of a sudden, I'm like, I don't understand what's going on. More specifically, because you've been so trained to go in K through 12 education to get the right grades, you've been probably working on essays for some time now, back to junior year and English teachers have been grading it and everything else. And then you get to our prompts and there's different questions. So you're trying to shoehorn old essays into this prompt. If you're not answering the prompt, that automatically turns me off. And uh, we were just doing some training earlier today and yesterday and doing some case studies and looking at some, reviewing some of this stuff. It's like, did they answer the question? Right. Did they, or are they just going off on some sort of weird um, literary journey with you? And it's like, well, that doesn't tell me about you. And the question was written specifically about you. So tell me about you. That's what's most important. So, uh, again, don't overthink it. And the questions that we write are specifically they're clear. We, we want to get to know you. So I hope that helps. Uh, Alice asks, and this is something that we didn't touch on because it's the other second uh, supplementary question that we asked. What are we looking for at the shared personality traits question? I'm sure you know the answer to this question. We're not looking for anything, um, but we want to know your thoughts. Um, Y'all want to tackle this one? I mean, well, this is probably I, one where people are overthinking it the most. I was just going to say, um, in Alice's question, she says, I think everyone within engineering is so different. So write about that. You are starting to answer that. Yeah, Alice. Um, and then explain a little bit more. That that's a perfect that's a perfect response. Yeah, I'm excited about this question because this is a question that the five of us wrote new this year, um, and it is the the it's a, it's we've had versions of this type of question in the past, but this is my favorite version of it, and and I'm I'm really excited about it because it's all about what's your take, what's your take about this specific definition or that, how you define it. And then you tell us how you think you go about that. That will tell us a lot about you. And so to be quite honest with you, it's us trying to break through you overthinking things to tell us more things about your thoughts, if that makes any sense. Um, Brett, uh, I'm going to stop talking here and let you guys jump in. How, can you tell us some stories about what students have done with Engineering Plus? I think one of the coolest examples was a student who worked at Disneyland and she was just an intern at the time, but she was working on a new Harry Potter world ride. And uh, it was whatever man, the man, property, get your, get your IP correct, man. Universal. 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 Sorry. <laughs> Universal. Uh, but she worked on the, uh, the Hagrid ride uh, and she actually got a part of the ride named after her, which is pretty cool. And her minor was dance. It is still mm -hmm. dance. She's still a student. So she's a, an electrical engineering student whose minor is in dance, which is really cool. Um, and so then worked in, in, in kind of worked in Universal theme parks in Orlando and was on ride design and using her electrical engineering skill sets and kind of this idea of the arts all coming together. It, it's it's really cool. Yeah, Cami. There's a park called the Cami, on the what's it called? What's the ride, Stacey? You're our, you're our resident Harry Potter fan. I haven't been able to ride it yet because it's in Florida, but it's like Hagrid's. I don't know, Hagrid something, Great Escape. I have no idea. <laughs> you know what it's called? You're playing. You're playing. You're playing. I have no idea what it's called. I promise. He I know. <laughs> but yeah, so some great example: Cami, uh, electrical engineering and dance. I know a number of computer science students that have minored in dance. I know students that are uh, majoring in you know 
any one of our engineering disciplines in, in something related to business, you know, whether that's like a, uh, entrepreneurship or, or finance or accounting, um, marketing, things like that. Oh, some other examples of, of students that you've known? So I brought up Will McGeary the other day um, in a oh, yeah. info session because he was he was a chemical engineer who minored in theater. And I was talking to a student who also has interest in theater. Um, lots of students who do music, um, students who just take classes here and there, or part of student organizations. Um, you know, they're they're engineering students, but they're really into politics, and so they're you know highly involved on campus and those types of student organizations. So lots of lots of different ways to kind of intermix your engineering degree with other aspects of your your interests. Yeah, I think it was Natalie like two years ago, computer science, business administration, um, working for Disney. She's actually in the credits of Frozen 2, which is really cool because she was able to code choreography for them because she minored in dance as well. So that's that's another piece combining all of the all of the loves together. Yeah, there, that's an interesting element too. That I want to add that 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 sometimes I've been getting this question of like, uh, how can I combine my my programs to do exactly what I want to do? And I want to specify that you you can you can engineering plus is about studying two different ideas. It doesn't have to come together. They could just be disparate, right? Like uh, these two, um, Natalie, computer science and dance. She was like blending her world all together, and like her research project was about like mathematical modeling of dancers using motion capture uh, and algorithms. It was this crazy over my head research that she was doing then she went to go work at disney and did some stuff with choreography and her programming and and but then cammy it was great she's a senior this year she's like the, the, mine don't have anything to do with each other i'm an electrical engineer and then i like taking dance classes like it just that's those are the things that i like um so they don't have to go together we've used dance so many so many of our uh, of our uh, um, examples right now but i guess it's just because it's one of the most fun ones I was also thinking about, because um, I remember here, Mahima and Audrey made a podcast about the importance of voting. And I know Mahima does research in politics and voting too. So like, you know, actually maybe not even unrelated because her major is industrial and systems engineering. So, um, but she, it's just one, another example. And I really loved that podcast and just hearing about like cool. those other things that they do outside of engineering. It's really cool. Yeah. And, and Mahima has had an interest in political science since before she got here. It's one of her passions. And so she's always combined that in some, some regard. She was working on Joe Biden's campaign before he was even the Democratic yeah. nominee. She was working on campaigns and doing things, which is really cool. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. It was really, really cool. Uh, Sophie, as I am sure, all caps, sure, I want to attend Viterbi. So I will absolutely be putting that in my first choice major. But for second choice major, do you prefer to see a student is all in and put a second option at Viterbi or is that not useful and I should choose something like math physics for second choice um no we don't your first choice is engineering that's all that matters for everyone that is joining us if you're thinking about applying to engineering you need to list one of the Viterbi school majors engineering or computer science majors as your first choice major your second choice does not matter matter of fact my recommendation is don't put anything related to Viterbi in your second choice think about something else outside of engineering that you may have an interest in if there is nothing, leave it blank. It's actually an optional part of the application because if you're not considered for the engineering school, you can be considered for your second choice major. If it's an engineering major, we've already considered you for engineering, so that kind of defeats its purpose. Be considered for something else. If it's blank, it'll be, it'll be considered for open for the entire university. Can we um, admit Sophie right now? Oh, do you want to admit Sophie right now? Why, because of her question? Yeah, she's so sure. Like, let's just admit her. Oh, got it. Okay, got it. Let's just... Let's just... <laughs> Now, now, now we're freaking her out. We're scared. I know. <laughs> You're like, why well, you only got a certain percentage of the vote as being favorites. <laughs> All right. Uh, Raya asks for a computer science student, does having prior experience matter? I think we've already answered this, but to be clear, no, you do not need any prior experience in computer science, in programming or in engineering to be admitted to one of our computer science or engineering majors. A good majority don't. So don't worry about that. Matter of fact, you know, the majority of high schools in the United States don't have any type of computer science class. Why would we ever require that? Yeah, just to add on to that, too, uh, students that come in with no coding experience whatsoever, they're just as successful as everyone else. They get just as good of internships. They get just as good of jobs. It really does not matter. Uh, Gabrielle asks, what strikes you all as a good essay that connects the applicant to USC? It's a different form of a very same question, but I want to address this specifically. <laughs> I'm 
next to the applicants. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's tough. I, I think that uh, a common thing that students do is just list things that are at USC. I think that's an, an example of what's not good is, yeah. is uh, sometimes it's just like a lot of commas and they're just listing things that are here and they definitely Googled. Because I want to get involved in X and Y and Z and A and B and yeah. C. And, and like you're like copying things from the website. Like, oh, look <laughs> at all the things I found on your website that I think sound yeah. really cool to me. It's like you can definitely use Google. You, you, you taught us that. For sure. A plus in Google research. Yeah. yeah. Don't get us wrong. If you if there's something that's been so amazing and that you've connected with at some sort and you want to talk about it in your application, great. But we're not necessarily looking for that you know like i think that's another one of those like outside influences on like oh you better go find everything that they do and say you love it um sure maybe that's a way to decide what schools you want to apply to um but i think that what you really want to get into here is when you look at the questions what's your what's your personal take on that question so it's not about i, I don't think connecting to usc i don't think that's necessarily a priority if that makes any sense angie do you want to jump in here and, and balance us out a little bit um I was just going to say, like, just keep in mind the general Common App essay is going to be read by every college that you apply for. So don't, unless you're just applying to USC, which was cool, don't write just about USC, uh, you know, because that would be kind of weird for someone else to read that. But I kind of like to what Michael was saying about just listing things. Another thing that students will often do is list everything that they're involved in all over again in the essay. And it's like, I'm involved in this and I'm involved in this. And rather than like talk about one really important involvement, and this is like if you choose that prompt, right, to talk about an involvement, rather than talk about one thing you're genuinely passionate about, like they go on, it's almost it looks like a resume. It reads like a resume versus an actual essay. So I would say just as a tip that I like to give students is maximize the space that you have when you're writing because you don't have a lot of space. So if you've already listed activities elsewhere, don't look, make your essay look like another activities list because you will have wasted precious words that you could use describing something else or talking about yourself too. I would also add that there's only one short answer question that actually asks something related to USC, which is why do you want to study what you want to study at USC? And so don't try to f f you know, finagle that into all of the other questions. And the, the, the questions outside of that really have nothing to do with USC. Again, they're about you. Uh, Isha asks, if you don't get admitted to Viterbi and you don't put a second choice major, can you still be admitted to USC? Uh, yeah, I think it's what I just said earlier about the second choice. So hopefully that answered that question. Um, does USC have a general admission officer and one from Viterbi to look at Viterbi applications? We have a lot of us, right? So there are, I don't know, tens of dozens of applicant re re readers in, in the in, in central admission. Becky, you're going to say something? I think, well, I, I think in all our trainings this week, they said there's 45 territory managers in central admission. Okay. So you got about 45 and a few more actually than that, uh, obviously, because we got lots of readers, right? And so you got you got lots of people reading applications. And they're kind of in central admission, the kind of running point on your application, meaning it's making sure it's complete, kind of doing some initial review on that. Um, but what's important to understand is that they're not filtering applications. We have access to all of the applications that are in the Viterbi School, and we will jump in at various points. In some situations, we'll be in, inside of a file reading it and adding comments before territory managers in there, or sometimes it's after. And more often than not, what's important to understand is that then there are multiple committees, and so there's not one path in which an application will find its way going through. It's not, it's not a very clean kind of technical flow chart. It is very nebulous. It is very collaborative. Uh, and, it, and it's not, I mean, even just amongst the five of us, you know, back in pre COVID days, I mean, how many times would we be reading an application and then just walk into the other person's office? Like, I need you to read this. Can, cause you, I need you to give me a second take on this, uh, or tell me what you think, or I'm thinking this, am I way off? Like that, that it's all about trying to understand how a student is. So it, it, it's, it's again, very personal process with lots of layers and lots of eyeballs. Rahul asks, uh, excited to be here. Hey man, we're excited you're here. More than anything. Uh, and I was wondering, can you share a bit about research experience at Viterbi? Yeah, let's talk about research, y'all. There's lots of it. We have to do it. <laughs> like USC has to, has to do research. And so if you wanna do research, there's a lot of opportunities because we have to do it. <laughs> Being a major research institution. Um, but, but I think more importantly, um, there's, 
there's lots of research going on and students can get involved as early as first semester. So you don't have to be a grad student. You don't have to be a senior. Um, we have first year students who are who are involved in research and there's a couple different ways that you can get those positions. Um, one of them is through a, the scholarship program. So applying by December 1st can put you in the running for a research scholarship, um, which just means that you have uh, your kind of guaranteed research and then you get paid for the hours that you're working. So um, so that's nice. But I think a lot of our students just get research by finding a lab that's interesting to them, emailing the faculty setting up a time to talk with them um, and, and you know seeing if it's a good fit in that lab. But um, I've never really heard of a student who wanted to do research who wasn't able to find a position. Yeah. You know, over $208 million in our annual research expenditures, the most research being done per faculty member of almost any engineering school in the world. Your opportunities as an undergraduate to get involved are huge. And over the last year, really triggered by COVID, we've actually developed a number of new funding resources for undergraduate students. Um, and of course, we love acronyms, so it's called CURVE, the Center for Undergraduate Research at Viterbi Engineering. I really think they forced an acronym on that one. Mm -hmm. um, but it's this opportunity to, you know, we, we offer research uh, fellowships for incoming students as part of our scholarship process, highly competitive, of course, but that's where we pay you to do it. But now current students that maybe didn't have that when they came in will have new funding opportunities. So while students have always had the opportunity to get involved in labs, now the grand majority of them are getting paid to do so. So all new stuff. I want to take this minute to let you realize that we're coming up on our 10 minute mark. We have 10 minutes left. And so uh, uh, we almost all of the upvotes are somewhat tied. Um, and so if you see questions that you really want to push up, Go down and use that thumbs up feature and upvote those questions to the top. And we're only going to be answering the ones that we can get to in the next 10, maybe 12, 13 minutes. Oh, look at the action that that just happened. Look at all that go. Oh, my goodness. It is it is a free for all. This is so cool. All right. Um, so I'm going to give it about 10 seconds to let this win out to see what kind of questions you want to to be answered. There's what percentage of students get a merit scholarship in USC? If I, last time I looked at this, right, so there are a number of merit scholarships, full tuition, half tuition, quarter tuition, a bunch of other smaller students. When I looked at our incoming class, I was close to 45%. Did that sound about right to you guys? Of the incoming class. Of the incoming class. Yes. No. That's probably about right. No, I was purposely misleading on that one, though. Yes, I'm like that. Let me explain that students who are admitted and then chose to attend and probably chose to attend because they have a merit scholarship. Right. So that is very misleading. We're yeah. very generous is the point I'm making, but also it's highly competitive. I mean, when you look at the if, compared to the applicant pool, Angie, were you going to jump in here? Yeah, I was because I was when you said that, I was like, mm, what for what pool? Because incoming uh, class. Yeah, incoming class. The reality is that in the applicant pool, it's about one to two percent of students who are invited to interview for a scholarship. So that's why I was like 45 percent. Well, I, I, you know, it's a little bit bigger than one to two. Let's call it three percent. But okay. uh, because we have some that we don't interview for. Right. So but think about it this way, y'all. Thirteen thousand applications. Right. We enroll about four hundred and ten students. OK, that's our target enrollment. But thirteen thousand applications and we're only admitting around 10 percent. And so one to two or three percent of the applicant pool that is inside that 10 percent range so again highly selective to get a scholarship incredibly selective that said there's no reason not to throw your hat in the ring get your application in by december 1st help us help you as much as we possibly can to be considered for these scholarships are some majors in viterbi more competitive than others no Clean, no. I don't even want any discussion on this There's, unless you guys have something else you want to add on to this like that's different, but no. And that's what's really important to understand. There is, we have no impacted programs. In, so putting down one of our majors versus another it does not affect your chance of admission. More importantly, applying to engineering at USC does not affect your chances of admission to USC as a whole. Okay, it's not any more difficult to be admitted to engineering and computer science at USC than anything else. We are, everything's competitive. Okay, not, not nothing's easy, but everything's competitive and nothing's more difficult. Like, are we accepted into the engineering school or our engineering major, which is a different question, not related to the other one. Yes, you're going to be admitted directly to the major of your choosing. Uh, but the good news is you're not locked into that major. And so if you decide that you don't like it, you can switch. If you've been admitted to one of our Viterbi school majors in your time at USC, you're actually been admitted to all of them. So you can switch whenever you want, however you want. There's no application process or transfer process. 
Uh, Cindy Zhang, what's the biggest difference between undeclared engineering and choosing a specific major? Well, you wouldn't have a major. You can't, you can't graduate with undeclared engineering. That's the biggest difference. Um, as far as admission goes, nothing. Yeah. Sorry. But yeah, no, as far as the admission process, nothing. There's nothing different between it. Um, you can apply as an undeclared engineer, but eventually you do have to pick a major. And if you're admitted as an undeclared engineer, we will help you pick which major you're going to start in. And then if you like that, you'll stay in it. And if you don't, you'll change your major. So it's just a place to start, um, but it doesn't affect your admission chances at all. I think what's most important there, yeah, is it doesn't affect your admission chances. It's considered one of our engineering majors. You apply, you get accepted. Yeah, and the only thing you can't do, as Becky says, you can't graduate as an undeclared engineering uh, major. It's, it's You have to get a degree at some point. Yeah, if, can I add something like really quickly to yeah. that? I think to the previous question too, because sometimes students try to choose which major is going to help them get into USC the most. Like Paul said, there's nothing, there's no one major that's more competitive than the other. Choose the major that you are genuinely passionate about at this moment because it's also gonna be reflected in the writing if you talk about that major. Um, because you know, like when you can choose a major that you're genuinely passionate, it's gonna show in the writing, it's gonna show in the way that you talk about it. And if you're undeclared and just don't know what engineering is, but you know it's something cool, then talk about it in that perspective. That's great. Um, London asked a great question. What makes USC's approach to engineering unique? Um, I mean, I think there's a lot of differences between Viterbi and, and how the school sorts sort of approaches um, engineering and maybe some other, you know, the really great engineering programs you're looking at. Um, and to kind of reiterate, none of us are engineers, so none of us have ever gone through an engineering curriculum. Um, but what I know about some other schools in, in Viterbi um, is just sort of the environment, the atmosphere is, I feel like very different than at some other schools. Um, it's a very collaborative learning environment and that's something that's a little bit different than other programs. Um, we don't have weed out classes. So for those of you who, who don't know, you know, maybe 600 students are in the intro to computer science class and only 300 of them are gonna graduate with the degree. Um, we don't have that, our, our school actually grows the class grows we we invite more people in um, as the years go on than you know kind of getting people out of the program um, and i think the size of our school is very different so 410 first year students divided across 30 different majors it doesn't divide evenly but you can see how small those intro classes are going to be and so you really get to know your professors you get to know your peers um, you're working together in group projects uh, USC is very competitive and Paul has said over and over again, it's, it's a very competitive application process and it's, it's a competitive school to get into. But once you're there, we want every student to graduate with a degree in engineering and go off to get jobs and to be successful and to get into graduate programs. And there's a lot of support there for our students. And I think being a small school, allows us to do that. But then also we're at a large university. So you have the research opportunities and you have the extracurriculars and you have all these other things that you can become involved in. Um, and so I think that's that's a pretty unique experience um, where at some schools, engineers are on one side of campus and they never come over to the other side of campus. And that's not the case at USC. And I think that's a little bit unique for, for an engineering program. Absolutely, small size, uh, admitted directly to your major, flexible program, not locked into your major. Um, collaboration, getting to you know your, your your teammates, never competing, never fighting for a spot on the curve, um, a place where we care and we want to make sure that you're successful and we only admit people that we think are going to be successful. Uh, that weeding out process is far too common at engineering schools because they're usually larger public institutions and their enrollment management is, is really just let's throw a bunch of people at it and see who comes out of the other end. Seems somewhat of a Darwinian approach to education. Uh, and, and we don't take that approach. Uh, if we're going to admit you, we're going to do everything we can to support you and help you be successful. And I think that's a unique approach to engineering, uh, specifically an undergraduate. And also, finally, uh, the fact that you don't have to be just an engineer. Uh, you have the thoughts with the things we talked about already in this conversation about Engineering Plus. We hope you're bringing different ideas to campus. And we hope you're going to be able to be an engineer that is an enabling professional, someone that is able to enable other disciplines, enable other professionals, and come up with solutions for those problems that they're trying to solve, which are multifaceted and complex. And are and in the real world, there aren't kind of, math doesn't answer the problems in the real world. Math is the beginning of a tool set to answer the problem. And it's a combination of your objective skill set, your subjective skill set that you'll learn, communication, collaboration, and ultimately innovative thinking and entrepreneurialism. So that's really what I think is unique. 
Um, Amel, something unique about USC Viterbi that we couldn't find online. I think we just did that. Um, and that I, I don't really know what you're asking, to be quite honest with you. Do you guys? I mean, like, I that's, that's a question better asked to students. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, here's another thing too. As we start to wrap up, uh, if, if someone uh, can put links into the recordings for the live chats, the student live chats, uh, go look at all those live chats. There's a whole live chat on research. There's a whole live chat on different student identities and their social communities that they've built. Uh, there's live chats on majors with faculty to, you know, to learn specifically about that. And we've had all these events. Please go check that out. You can watch all of the recordings, and there's lots of stuff in there. And and you know something that only we're going to know. Well, it, it's a combination of all these things. Um, and Rachel had this question that I, I pinned earlier, so I'm going to go to it. Do you recommend an interview? And if so, when is a good time to schedule one? Rachel, we don't conduct interviews, and so I, I'm not certain where you might be getting your information. But there are there is no such thing as admission interviews for USC. Um, now we've mentioned earlier. The concept of an interview and i think that was a little out of context and that was when we choose someone as a as a finalist to one of our scholarships there is a scholarship interview and so that's after someone's been admitted and that that process is is not till till next year not till 2021 actually and it's in like february uh so we're, we're not in that process there is no interview process for admission to usc um jacob asks we'll go fast here for supplemental essays if we picked our top two majors one of the answers we want to talk. Should we talk about both majors or just your first choice in the Viterbi school? That's up to you, man. And read the questions. There's only one question that actually asks you about your major, and it does say, "Feel free to talk about both if you want to." So that's that's kind of up to you. Um, we did research experience. I didn't click that done. In addition to self-reporting SAT scores, do we need to send official scores from College Board this year? Is that only if we we're accepted? Um, that if okay. So first of all, Matthew is asking a question about SAT scores. We need to clarify. We are test optional. So on the application, it will ask us, do you want us to consider your SAT scores? If you say yes, we're going to be waiting for official scores and your application will not be complete until you submit them. If you say no, because we're test optional, we won't look for SAT scores and your app is complete. So if you are submitting SAT scores, which I don't think anywhere near a large percentage of people are going to be doing this year because in, in these COVID eras, you shouldn't be worried about testing. Test optional means there is no penalty if you don't submit any, any test scores. All of you should not be worrying about SAT or ACT. We're getting, out, I'm still to this day, I'm getting so many questions about, oh my God, I've got, a, I've got a test scheduled for December. Who knows if that's going to go through? Don't stress out about this. Don't do it. We're not caring about test scores. I'm going to be clear about that. We're not caring about test scores. If you have them and you want to send them in, you got to send in the official scores. Okay. But you don't have to. So don't do that. Okay. Um, Max, does an applicant with a hyper-focused STEM curriculum have a better chance than someone with a strong mixed liberal arts curriculum? No. Moving on. Um, if we're in calculus this year, should we send our first quarter grades if we apply by December 1st, this first semester went into mid-January? Uh, ooh, Lan, look, winner, winner, Lan on Dong Vu. First question and will be our last question. We, we're ending it. We're starting and ending on the same person's question. So thank you for your question. Uh, this question has come up a lot with me lately. Uh, I'll apply by December 1st, get it in, and you will submit whatever transcripts you have at that point. Later, when you have your actual fall grades, you will need to update us on that. And you can do that inside the USC applicant portal. Remember, your application doesn't, like when you hit submit, it doesn't close. It's not like that's your whole thing. Maybe a letter of recommendation will come in later. Maybe a transcript that you're updating will come in later. Maybe some sort of other bit of information will come in later. We're, we're live reviewing these things as they go, and we know when we're missing things. So for example, if we see a specific application here with no calculus grade we're going to be like oh i need to see these fall grades and we'll like mark it as need to see fall grades and we'll wait to see those fall grades and when it comes in we'll get triggered and go back into the application to continue reviewing it so keep in mind it's a very live application don't don't worry about that um so we have we got through a lot of questions we got through as many as we possibly could it looks like nearly 30 of them let's do one more just to make it 30 okay um Let's talk about the minor process. Connor's last question here, which is, if I want to major in engineering and minor in music, how would I go about applying and what are the logistics of taking classes in different colleges? First off, major, minor, engineering plus, all that stuff. The application is, at USC, you're only allowed to apply to one major and you only get accepted to one major. The idea of doing a minor or a second major is something that you do once you're a student at USC. So for now, it's fun to talk about it because those are lots of opportunities. You can do whatever you want when you come to USC. But 
it's, it has nothing to do with now. It's only as an as a current student. So once you, you're here at USC, and, and more specifically, it's usually only only if you had like a, a, at least a semester under your belt, will you start to work with your advisor and say, you know, I'm thinking I want to minor in music. Okay, cool. Let's look at those courses and let's work it into your academic plan. And everybody's academic plan is different, but the majority of our students who are interested in doing this are are majoring in engineering and minoring across the campus. Things like music, things like business, cinema, film, theater, all these things are really cool. They're there for them, and their student that students are doing that in four years. But that's a conversation between you and your advisor as you start taking courses. Also, more specifically, you haven't taken any courses at USC yet. So let's. It's it's great to talk about all these ideas, but you're going to have your own take on like how much time you have to add more work because that's the one thing you really want to understand is more classes is more work. You're adding that into your schedule, so keep that in mind. But we're here to help you, and that's why students choose to do those things here. Okay. Also, uh, what's it like to take classes outside of, uh, of the engineering school? You're not locked into some sort of building on campus. Uh, you will have classes, you know, you'll, maybe you'll take a music class for, for, a, for a GE or maybe you'll do something else. You'll, take, you'll be taking classes all across the different schools. Uh, and it seems from the outside looking in, like there's all these different, like, you know, uh, camps, but there isn't. Uh, USC students are USC students and you'll be taking courses across the board. Oh, okay, so we got to 30 questions. That was great. There are a lot more. If you guys want, I mean, most of them are kind of repeated things that we've talked about. And a lot of this stuff is, is uh, on our website or it's been talked about uh, in our other live chats and our faculty discussions. I encourage you to check out those, those links uh, that were put into your chat session. Uh, I also saw that we put in the email address. Thank you, Becky. Um, and so if you have other questions beyond today that are burning, you can you can send us an email via admit at usc.edu and our phone number 213-600-9919. And during our normal office hours, that rings on all of our cell phones and we will answer that question, we will answer that phone. Um, and if you haven't attended one of our info sessions, and I think that a number of you might not have at this point, uh, I would encourage you to go to one of our info sessions. The one of the five of us will lead it. We always have current students there, and we will actually answer every single question in those info sessions. We go into detail about this process. Today was just a fun AMA event to kind of handle any other questions uh, and kind of help you with that process, but there might be other things you might come to learn from those sessions. So at viterbi.live slash events, you'll find the opportunity to sit on an admission info session, and we'd love to have you. Uh, and, and hopefully if you have anything else that you want to ask us, you can email us. But other than that, December 1st is the thing you got to remember. Remember, get your application in by December 1st in order to be considered for merit-based scholarships. Of course, there is a final January deadline, but there's no reason to even talk about it because you're all going to apply by December 1st, and that's going to be good stuff. Okay? So, without further ado, let's just say goodbye, I guess. Yeah? Okay. Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining us.